apologize for my behavior. I didn't do nothing. I was just there at the wrong time, at the wrong place. I didn't mean to kill Ozzy. Actually, I really didn't. Sorry for what happened to you, Ozzy, but... You like in prison. One has to debate whether there should be any sympathy for individuals convicted in the situations of these mad responses to court convictions or whether their response to their punishment is justified on behalf of the aggrieved. Depending on the circumstances, it could be a risky, perplexing position. Here are five insane responses of young offenders to life sentences. Number one, Shondell Jackson. There are times when the reading of a sentence in court can cause a lot of drama, but the response in this 2010 case, in which Shondell Jackson, then 19, was sentenced, is insane. Nathan Potter, a student at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, who was 21 years old, was killed intentionally and robbed by Jackson, who was found guilty of both crimes. Potter was killed on his way home to his flat when Jackson and 20-year-old Derek Thomas made an attempt to rob him, but Potter had no cash with him. Jackson showed no signs of remorse or sorrow for his crimes throughout the trial and reading of his sentence. In fact, he once grinned at the victim's family as he was being led out of the courtroom. The court heard from Jackson's mother just seconds before the sentencing that she first learned of the murder on television. When I saw it on the news, I even cried. I'm like, oh my God, I can't imagine what that mother is going through. I never had a clue that my child had anything to do with it. My son is not a monster. He is not a monster. Jackson then expressed regret for his actions. I apologize for my behaviors. Please don't take my life from me. When he was given a well-deserved life sentence in prison with no possibility of parole, Jackson started yelling at the judge after. He also became increasingly belligerent, forcing numerous officers to use pepper spray to control him. As this was going on, Jackson's family members in the rear of the courtroom started addressing the victim's family directly. I hate you, I hate you all. Number two, Martise Fuller. Martise Fuller, wearing a blazer, appeared to be sitting peacefully at the defense table for practically the entirety of his five-day trial, while numerous witnesses supported the prosecution's argument that Fuller fatally shot his ex-girlfriend and injured her mother after a contentious breakup. Behind the required mask, any feeling was concealed. Fuller tore off his mask and sobbed hysterically when the jury returned its unanimous guilty verdicts. Through his emotions, Fuller apologized to the remaining witnesses in the courtroom, I'm sorry. Martise Fuller was found guilty of shooting and killing his ex-girlfriend, 15-year-old Kaylee Juga, and critically injuring Kaylee's mother, Stephanie Juga, in their Kenosha home in May 2019. Fuller, who was 18 at the time, was given a life sentence without the possibility of supervised release. He prepared a statement for the courtroom just before being sentenced to life in jail. I wanted to write this giving my sincerest apologies to this family I once shared time and love with. Truthfully, I am sorry about the pain you've all suffered through, but more importantly, the loss of my ex-girlfriend Kaylee that I love too. But I have to continue to stand innocent because I am, and I hope you all can eventually see in your hearts that I am not the person the media has made me out to be. I don't have any ability to trust that you will never commit these acts again. So in the interest of protecting the public, acknowledging the seriousness of these acts, the court orders that on count one, you are sentenced to life in prison without eligibility for extended supervision. Number three, Brandon Spencer. Wannabe thugs with guns should use Brandon Spencer as a teaching tool. The 21-year-old was given a sentence of 40 years to life in jail for firing at a throng in line for a Halloween party in 2012 on the USC campus. His target was among the four individuals he injured, but he appeared to believe that because no one died, he should be given a pass. According to the prosecution, when Spencer, then 19, arrived for the party at UFC's student center, he saw a member of a rival gang who he accused of being responsible for a shooting that had injured him the year before. Spencer walked away and came back with a rifle, hoping to make things even. As Gino Hall retreated and frightened partygoers dispersed, he opened fire on his opponent, emptying his handgun in the process. Hall was hurt along with three other teenagers. Spencer was not a student at USC, and neither were any of his victims. He also apologized. Sorry for what happened to you, but you like in prison. I'm not a bad person, but I made mistakes. I'm not just some gangbanger that you try to portray me as. When the judge read Spencer's sentence, he had a temper tantrum akin to a two-year-old being given a timeout in the courtroom, sobbing and hitting his head against a table. The courtroom was crowded with Spencer's friends and relatives. They pounded the judge with letters praising his fine character and attributing his poor decisions to negative influences and gang-infested surroundings. 
Number 4. Jennifer Mee In the murder trial of Jennifer Mee, aka the Hiccup Girl, the prosecution played a recording of her telling her mother that she didn't kill anybody but that she set everything up. Mee was accused of first-degree murder in the death of Shannon Griffin, a 22-year-old Walmart employee in 2010. Mee rose to national celebrity when she was 15 years old after her hiccups persisted for five weeks. She hiccuped up to 50 times per minute for more than a month, practically non-stop. Her family claims that after she started taking medications for Tourette's syndrome, the hiccups eventually ceased. Prior to rendering its decision against Jennifer Mee, a Pinellas County jury debated for four hours. During the reading of the verdict in the Clearwater courtroom, Mee sobbed. Judge Nancy Mote Lee clarified a little while later that the charge only allowed for a life sentence without the possibility of release. The jury listened to an audio of Mee's mother questioning her about her arrest and charges on Thursday after the prosecution played the recording for the jury. I ain't killed anybody because I set everything up. It all went wrong, Mom. It just went downhill after everything happened, Mom. In 2010, Mee convinced Shannon Griffin to visit an abandoned house where she planned to buy marijuana. Griffin struggled and was shot four times while being robbed by two of Mee's buddies there. The police earlier stated that they didn't think Mee pulled the trigger. She could be charged with first-degree murder in Florida, though, because of her role in a heist that resulted in a fatality. The court had already been notified by Mee's counsel that she had schizophrenia. The judge subsequently mandated that Mee get a psychological evaluation. Mee was capable of standing trial, it was later found. It was the time of the sentence and Mee cried after hearing that. Jury, having found you guilty of murder in the first degree, Miss Mee, I will adjudicate you guilty and sentence you to life in prison without parole. Laurent Rayford, Mee's co-defendant, was found guilty and given a life sentence. The case has not yet been tried for Lamont Newton, the other co-defendant who was Mee's boyfriend at the time of the murder. Number 5. Dylan Shoemaker for fatally beating the 23-month-old kid of his girlfriend, Dylan Shoemaker, then 17 years old, received a sentence of 25 years to life in jail. Dylan Shoemaker was chosen as Ashley Smith's babysitter while Smith was at work. Austin Smith, who was about a year old, was allegedly unresponsive when Shoemaker phoned the police at 8 p.m. on March 19, 2013. It took the Springfield, New York police a short while to realize that there was something fishy about Shoemaker's assertions. Second-degree murder was the charge against Shoemaker, and it was used in his trial. In a Buffalo courtroom, Dylan apologized to his 19-year-old girlfriend while breaking down in tears. I didn't mean to kill Austin. Ashley, I really did it. You really think I did it? I didn't mean to hurt him. In his mother's residence on Cochrane Avenue, Shoemaker shared a residence with Ashley Smith and her two sons. When the attack happened, he was 16 years old. The kids weren't his either. Additionally, the court mentioned the 200 texts Shoemaker sent while watching the kids for his girlfriend as she worked a night shift at a restaurant in Springville. The phone call that the Shoemaker had with his mother as he was waiting for his trial to begin was recorded. Listen to what the judge has to say about what the Shoemaker's mother stated. In a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, and I got a quote from the court reporter, I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury and they're going to feel sorry for me. Shoemaker testified throughout the trial that although doctors had prescribed a medication to address his rage and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, he had chosen not to take it. Shoemaker explained to the judge that he was attempting to fill the void left by his father's absence by accepting Ashley Smith and her children into his mother's home. While thanking his family for being there at the sentence, he admitted to the judge that his upbringing had not been ideal. Shoemaker testified to the jury at his trial that he struck Austin in the face. When he spit out his food and said an expletive, he spanked him. He also acknowledged hitting the boy's head on the floor while changing his diaper as the toddler attempted to get up, and that he later smacked the boy three times in the back of his head with a pillow out of fear that he would wake up his young sibling. The two boys were in his care for just the second time, he claimed. Shoemaker cried as he had meant to at the sentencing hearing, putting on a mournful expression. I can't take what was done and I wish I could give my life for Austin. The effectiveness was poor. In light of Dylan Shoemaker's role in Austin Smith's death, the judge gave him 25 to life term. Regardless of the act you did, hearing that you'll spend the rest of your life in prison is a difficult thing to process. However, just when you think you predict how people will respond to such a statement, they go and shock you. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and enable notifications to never miss another video from us.